Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's keep it going. As we said, uh, what was it, two years ago, the conference? Yeah, our apostle, uh, like you say, just went a whole nother way when he, he, he got up to stand and uh, just kind of blew our mind because we were just like sitting on the edge of our seat. Okay, what's God going to say to us? And he comes and says, we're going to talk about health. The wholeness conference. The wholeness conference. And man, and we're sitting there going like, uh-oh, we, we got to do something because, you know, hey, spiritually, we good. But physically, and maybe even mentally, there's some things that we need to correct. And I, so I began to think during this conference, I said, man, you know, we can't stop that. We got to keep being reminded, <laughs> amen. We got to keep challenging ourselves because, listen, I want to be around. I want to be around and, and, and watch my grandkids grow up and go, you know, and all that. And maybe hopefully even still throw ball at 75, amen, all that. I, I want to be around. And so I take it serious, amen. And I was an athlete, so I understand all of it. But I also know how we can forget <laughs> real easy, amen. And I was telling, I was telling the church probably a month ago or so that, that, that uh, you know, me and uh, Miss uh, Little Debbie, uh, is that her name? We, we, we got divorced, but I'm still, I'm still trying to get rid of hostess. I'm still in the fire. Amen. <laughs> and so, you know, it, it, it's, it's serious because you get older, things just don't, you know, they don't burn off, you know, like they used to. Amen. When you're just sitting around. And so, uh, you know, I thought about this next guy that's coming. Amen. And I tell you what, I, I love his heart. I love his passion. Uh, you know, I met him probably two years ago. Uh, two years ago, we had a, at a network group, amen, just, just business stuff and, and uh, just, just got to know his heart, uh, not only for just the love and, and that he cares about people. Um, and yes, he's a doctor, amen, a well, uh, been here now, what, 20 years? Is it 20? 98, since 98, amen, and, and then he got, a, he got the revelation that something, something which really, we talked about stretch and do a change, and so uh, I, I want to give him an opportunity just to share with us, and we're going to be better with it. Come on, Dr. Hugh, and uh, won't you share with us about, this is the wellness doctor, Dr. Hugh Beatty. You know, well, after hearing all these speakers today, I was saying to myself, man, they bring in fire. So mine's not going to be that kind of fire, but it's going to be fire in a different way. Amen. It's going to be fire that's going to focus on you. And understand, you know, I was raised in a church, and I've, I used to give um, uh, seminars on financial health, even though I was a physician. I took two years off from medicine um, back in 96, from 96 to 98, and I was focused on that. It's just amazing as I sit here and I said, okay, last time I really spoke in church about a topic that's not necessarily biblically related, it was on finance. <laughs> and I'll never forget, I was going to a church here in town called uh, Westside Church of Christ. Some of you probably heard of it. And over there, I taught an 11-week course on God or money, whom do you serve? So now, today, just to show that there's some relevance to what I'm going to say, it's all over Scripture. Because the great physician is Christ Jesus. And so when people say, hey, you know, Dr. Beatty, thank you for doing this and that for me. And always in the back of my mind, give God the glory. And, um, you know, Harold's a, a Facebook friend of mine. He sees that. And, and my patient has done very well under wellness. And I want to go ahead and go through some things, the process. So I'm listening to different speakers. And Rod, you were just like, man, I don't need to get up here. <laughs> okay, you, you're still in the show when it comes to physical health. But um, there's one scripture that I have that's over my, uh, my, in my lobby that's right over the, the receptionist's desk. It's, it says, it's John 5, 6, do you want to be well? And I want everyone to ask themselves that question, not only in here, but also when they come to see me as a patient. Okay, because you really have to make that conscious decision. Jesus asked that man at the, at the, at the well, do you want to be well? He had been laying there for 38 years. Okay, and then he still didn't give the answer that I would have gave. Yes, you didn't make an excuse. My patients do that when they come in. But before I really get started into what I want to say, I just want to tell you who I am. Um, I'm Dr. Hugh Beatty. I um, was born and raised down in Los Angeles. Actually, I was raised in Compton, California. And um, I went to college there at Oxnard College in Los Angeles. 
And I was a chemistry major at the time, so I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I thought I wanted to be a chemist. So I worked up at Dow Chemical up in uh, Walnut Creek um, back in 79. And when I was working at Walnut Creek, I realized I, I love people too much. I love interacting with people. I was in a lab all the time, just dealing with chemicals and things. So when I went back for my junior year of, of college, the, uh, my chemistry advisor, he had been trying to talk me into medical school for the first two years. He said, you got great grades. I don't understand why you don't want to go to medical school. I said, well, you know, I love science. And so uh, when I came back after working at Dow Chemical, I decided I wanted to go to medical school. And so the reason why I ended up in anesthesiology was because he was saying, look, you have the best of both worlds. You can do stuff on patients, <laughs> but you can also do research in pharmacology and physiology. Well, anyway, I ended up going to medical school at UCSD in San Diego. And um, uh, then after UCSD, I went and did my internship at Howard University in, in, back in Washington, D.C. Uh, then after that, I came back and trained at Harvard UCLA and did anesthesiology. Now, how did I go from anesthesiology to wellness? Well, it's an interesting story, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you this, that at one point in my life, when I hit about 36, 37, God started working on my life. And he made me start thinking about what in the world are you doing? Where are you going? So I took some time off from medicine, and I rededicated my life to God. I got married, and then we ended up moving to Bakersfield. That's how I ended up here. Uh, <laughs> but what happened during all that time, uh, when I first went back to medicine, I didn't want to practice anesthesia anymore. I wanted to be in the office setting. I wanted to actually deal with patients and not have them always asleep. <laughs> and, so, and so what happened, I, I started working in urgent cares, and I, then I, this doctor um, was saw, seeing my work, some of his patients going to the urgent care, he said, hey, can you come and help me out in my office? So I said, yeah, I can come and do that. And so I started working in his office, and I started seeing a bunch of need for patients that, hey, not only this guy was not meeting their needs, the patient didn't realize it. And so I, but I had a background in pain management too from my training anesthesia. So I was, you know, he had these patients that was all these medications and drugs and things like that. And I don't want to throw him under the bus because it's public record. He, he's lost his license. And he at one point wanted me to join him in partnership. And I said, oh, no, no, no. And so he said, well, you're going to have to leave. I said, you want me to leave now? He said, well, you can stay till the end of the week. So at the end of the week, I left. And I joined a friend of mine I went to college with. He gave me three options. He said, you can work for me. You can um, uh, go into business with me, or you can do your own thing. It was an easy decision. I'm going to do my own thing. <laughs> and so that's what the whole process was. So give me a little bit of background, because it's going to make sense that I'm always into doing what I think is in the best interest of the patient, and that leads me to all these wonderful things that God is having me doing. So what happened is that I started building that practice and just one patient at a time, moonlight and anesthesia again. But after five years not doing it, I started doing some anesthesia. And uh, that was helping pay the bills as I built my practice. I didn't go into any debt because, remember, God of money whom you serve. I was telling those people back in 2000 that, oh, no man, nothing but the debt of love. So I was building that practice, uh, you know, blood, sweat, and tears. So what happened was that... Um, um, after I started building my practice up, doing some anesthesiology, a friend of mine, he once said to me, when I finally got in my own office in 2012, and that was forced on me. I was literally said, look, God made it clear, you've been here too long, so I'm going to have him kick you out of here. So I was kicked out, had no place to go. I ended up in the practice where I am now, just show you the providence and the, and, the, and, the, and the blessings of God. So the practice I was at in 2012, I said, okay. I'm a trust in God and build this practice. So in 2013, a friend of mine came to me, a sales rep. He said, he said, Hugh, as a doctor, what are you doing that's making you different than any other patient? I mean, any other doctor. He said, people come to you, treat high blood pressure just like anyone else, diabetes like anyone else, heart disease like anyone else. And I said, yeah, you're right. And he was just on me about that for about a good six months. And I was getting mad. I didn't want to see him anymore. I was like, he said, why should I come to you? And so then he kept telling me about this conference that, that was in Vegas. Okay, of all places, Sin City, right? So, so I went to it. It was, it was a conference put on. It was a 25th annual conference, American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. And I finally went to it, and I knew immediately what he meant. Because the first 30 minutes, I was sitting there just dumbstruck, like, Wow. This is really going to help people. This is what healthcare is. 
everything I was taught was like, you know, I was like almost like taught lies. I was taught medical care. I was taught pharmaceutical um, intervention. And interesting read, if you guys want to choose to do this, it's the struggle between Thomas Edison and John D. Rockefeller. I don't know if you guys knew they struggled in, in a medical perspective. Because John D. Rockefeller was, you know, the oil tycoon. And he wanted to um, um, use all these pharmaceutical products and even use pharmaceuticals to make, uh, I mean, uh, petroleum products to make pharmaceuticals. I said that wrong. And Thomas Edison was into, like, no, no, no. He was into holistic care and, and wellness. And in fact, the battle was, are we going to have gas-powered cars? Or are we going to have electric-powered cars? That was Thomas Edison working with Henry Ford. Initially, Henry Ford was doing electric cars. So that's why when you come in my office, I have a quote by Thomas Edison. And that quote by Thomas Edison says this, that the doctors of the future will deal not in, in, in medicating people, but dealing with the underlying cause of the illness and prevention. And I want people, when they come to my office, to know that. Another plaque that's in my office that's real critical is, is uh, where I say, from your mouth to your butt, how healthy is your gut? Because that's where all illness starts. Okay? So I can look at people and tell whether they have a problem with their health. But... That's just kind of some introductory information, but the main thing I want to say to you is this, that treating people who are in a state of illness and getting them to a perspective where they're well is nothing better. I've never had a better feel in, in life than that. Because it's like, I did anesthesia for years and I would see these women give birth and they're all excited okay? And I, I did other things where, you know, where people I had to resuscitate and brought them back to life. But there's nothing better than to see, like even here, he was tested in the fire, Pastor, when he fell there. You know what I mean? People I've known over the year, if they fell, they still be down there. We'd be calling 911. He bounced right back up. I asked, him, you okay? Okay. So that's what you want. You want to have your body in a state of health that you can respond to when those challenges of life come. When the pandemic hit, okay, and I had people come to me and they said, Doc, what should we do? Keep doing what you've been doing because you are seeking health. You're not worried about what's going to come your way. I told people, I wrote a, um, I don't know if you ever saw this, Harold, but I put something out on Facebook back in April of 2020, right at the early beginning of the pandemic. And I wrote this long article. It just came, I, I, was, I was in the early morning hours, I was waking up and the Holy Spirit put on my heart and I just started creating. Before I knew it, I created this long um, a piece and I basically said, I said, put on the whole armor of God. And I said, who's willing to stand with me as I stand with God? And the point was, I said, look, all we need is God and a strong immune system. So I, re, I, I went on and reviewed it again because I had people saying, Doc, what do you think? What do you think we should do with all these pandemic things? And I, 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 I reposted again back September of last year. And I said, I'm even more convinced that all we need to do is trust God have a strong immune system. So, so I want to kind of break down some things for you guys so you can kind of have an idea. But one of the things is, is that I, I practice something called the five pillars of health. Okay, and the five pillars stands for, if you, if you go out there in the lobby, I have a brochure. And the brochure is right here, do you want to be well? And for those who don't want to be well, eventually I'm going to change the sign in my lobby where it says ill. Do you want to be well? Do you want to be ill? That's your choice. Okay? But if you want to be well, you got to put in the work. I tell people all the time that doctors, medical doctors manage your illness. They keep you in a state of sickness. Wellness doctors give you the work. They'll give you the direction and say, this is what you have to do. So that's why I was relating to what you were saying. You got to put in the work yourself. It's good to have a little coach in your ear, but you got to put the work in, man. And I can relate to those pull-ups. You got two and a half when you first did it. I couldn't even get up one time the first time. <laughs> so I got more work to do. But anyway, if you look here on my brochure, the first one says hormone balance, gut health, balanced nutrition, resistance training, okay, and sleep. Now, that was my five pillars, now, who would want to have a house without a foundation? I had these five pillars without a foundation for about a good year, two years. <laughs> and then one day, I was learning about the importance of water. 70% of our body is water. And so I said, okay, let me put that foundation as water. 
okay? I'm going to break it down to you in a second. And then I had a patient, a sweet young lady, a believer. She came to see me because she was having irregular periods and painful periods and miserable. And sometimes she would have periods twice a month and things like that. And she was concerned about her eventual fertility. And she had heard about me. And so she came to see me. And she looked at, I was going through the consultation with her, our consultation I was doing. And she said to me, she said, Doc, you don't have a roof on your pillars. I said, yeah, I know. She said, you need to put love up there. I said, oh, yeah. So I want you to think about this for a minute. God is love. He's the chief cornerstone. He's the head, right? Living water is Christ Jesus. And he gave us a natural healing process if we only will apply it. You got to have balanced hormones to be healthy. I have not seen one person since I learned about wellness who did not get sick when they had balanced hormones. That they did not get cancer when they had hormone balance. So in wellness, that is critical. That was the first thing I learned in wellness was about the importance of hormones. And I couldn't get enough of it. The second thing is gut health. This is where the immune system relies, in the gut. Think about it. Things come from the outside world, come in. Okay, and your body's trying to protect you from what's coming in. The first pass is the liver. So if your liver is getting inflamed, then you're going to go. You're going to go quickly. You know, think about people who have liver failure. Unless they get a liver transplant, they don't make it. I've seen people die of what they call hepatorenal disease, which is liver failure, kidney failure. There's nothing the doctor can do. Um, the next one is um, balanced nutrition. Now, I don't say anything to anyone when I'm out in public eating with them. And please, don't go by how I eat in public either. Because usually when I'm eating, I'm not trying to offend other people. I'm not trying to sit there as a prude. Like what, what Paul said, be th all things to all people. And that you might not offend. Okay. And he even made it clear. Eat what's served in front of you unless it, it, it offends your brother. So, yeah, so some of you saw me eat some cobbler, but you won't see me eat the cobbler tonight. I don't have any cobbler at home. <laughs> I told Harold I eat the sweets when it's put in front of me. Now, as long as I don't put it in front of me, I'm good. But somebody says, here you go. <laughs> I'm going to eat, okay? <laughs> okay. So, so then you go on to resistance training. Now, I don't look like your son back there, Harold. But he got the blessings of good genetics coming from you. And he's, because there's different body types. And he's also blessed with youth. I tell my staff all the time, in fact, I got the, my youngest staff, she's just turned 24. She just started working since she was 19. I tease her all the time. I said, are you ready to work for another doctor? No, Dr. Bowden, don't go anywhere. I said, are you sure? No, I learned too much from here. But she's 24 now. And I tell her all the time, I said, you know, uh, I said, health is wasted on the young. Because we used to say youth is wasted on young, right? No, health is wasted on Think about that. When you were young, you took, it, uh, you took your health for granted. And so I tell her all the time, I said, don't take your health for granted. Enjoy it. For women, their best years are 21 to 35. Because that's their best hormonal years. And she knows that. And she does everything properly to have it. She doesn't even have pain with her periods. When she did, when she first met me. But she listens very carefully what I teach. So, so anyway, that's another story. I know it's men in here, not women. But you guys are all with women, a lot of you. And you see your, your wives struggle with their periods. They struggle with their perimenopause, their menopause, their postmenopause. <laughs> and I look and I know that I've done a great job when the husbands thank me. They call me, but Doc, I don't know what you did, but man, my wife is doing great. <laughs> okay, thank you, sir. Now, the last thing is sleep. Sleep is critical. We really have, an, you're talking about the pandemic of, of COVID, but it's epidemic that people do not sleep. Insomnia is out of control. And we do the worst thing for the insomnia. You know what we do? You call that Tylenol PM. But you get over the counter. That Tylenol PM is linked to dementia. Just type in ben, uh, Benadryl or diphenhydramine and dementia. I was an anesthesiologist for a long time. And, you know, I had the patients that would wake up and they would have post-anesthesia syndrome. 
where they had brain fog sometime three weeks, six weeks, something like that. Because the anesthetics are an anticholinergic type of anesthetic. You need acetylcholine to connect the nerve pathways. It's a neurotransmitter. An anticholinergic blocks choline, and acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter. So you're blocking the transmission of your nerve connection when you do that Benadryl stuff. The same thing with Ambien that people want to take for sleep. The same thing with Trazodone. I don't write none of that stuff on my pad. I don't take any of that stuff. And I sleep like a baby. I'm going to tell you what I do at the end, okay, if, I, if you guys give me enough time. So, so anyway, so that, that is the five pillars. Now, what I want to do is tell you guys what you're facing. Some of you are dealing with it more successfully than others. But if I really want to look at a specimen of health in here, I would have to call Harold's son back up. Okay? The thing is, you cannot build muscle bulk like that without testosterone. So I already know he got good testosterone. I only have to check his levels. Now, if I wanted to get personal with him, I can look at his testicles. Okay? Because men who have low testosterone are going to have smaller testicles. Okay? The other thing I do is look at him is that he has a flat belly. Okay? The bigger the belly, the lower the testosterone. It's clear, clear and simple. Now, but I can't tell more than that from there so far as his sleep. I don't know what his nutrition like because remember, health is wasted on the young. He's still young, okay? So what's going to be the telling thing is when he gets to be my age. I'm 62, and I don't take any meds, okay? And when I was 50, I started going to the gym, but I did a lot of things wrong. I, I need some, some direction from him. But what it was is that every course I went to for A for M, I said, I'm the patient. When I go learn stuff, I say, I want to learn this for me. I want to see how it applies to me. If it's good enough for me, I know it's good enough for the patient. So I want to just kind of be, before I step down from here, I want to just go ahead and tell you what, what, what is plaguing, plaguing the, the um, health care of, of people that are in the United States. And it's hormone imbalance, and two most critical hormones, and I was telling Pastor Larry this, was that it's insulin and cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone. Insulin is the hormone that you guys all heard about. And what happens is that the five pillars that I have here is impacted by those two hormones. Cortisol, because you just stress, stress with living. You know, Scripture says, be anxious for nothing. Now, I kind of feel a little, little uncomfortable and bad up here because I had to go through divorce, but my divorce started before the pandemic. My wife just decided to one day just leave, and I couldn't do anything about it. I remained faithful. I did everything I could, and one day I just asked God. I said, I kept saying, God, save my marriage. Save my I said it three times. Then one day I just said, God, just deliver me. The next day she was gone. And so, so, but I said all that to say that I was, I was tested in that fire all through the pandemic. 2019 was tough for me. 2020 was tough for me. But because I was working on my health, I was able to withstand it. My hormones were balanced. I was already eating well. I was exercising like I should. I had a relationship with God. I had a strong network of friends. Because I was the only one here. I have no family here. So it was my family and her son. And I had no relationship with them anymore. They just left. And there was a many a time I wanted to leave, but my staff and my patients kept me strong. So when you guys were talking about forging the fire, like, yeah. But mine was the year before the pandemic. But anyway, so the pandemic didn't hit me too hard compared to that. But I want to go ahead and say this. The problem is those two hormones are leading to estrogen dominance. Estrogen dominance is the number one cause of cancer. Let me say that again. Estrogen makes things grow. It makes cancers grow. It makes your belly grow. It causes diabetes, hypertension, heart disease. What makes estrogen increase? Insulin resistance and stress. How do you handle the stress? How do you handle insulin resistance? Well, when patients come see me, the, I, I do a conference of blood panel. You know, over at Quest, they say, yeah, you must be Dr. Beatty's patient because I order a lot of blood that first visit. 
But all that blood is very critical. Because I'm going to tell you, after the, after the blood draw and, and you go through the initial screening of history, physical exam, and blood work, I'll be able to say that medically, you know, you got some medical issues here. Or medically, you're fine. You don't need medicines, but you're not well. Or you're well. I see, I probably seen three people in the last two years that I said they were well from the initial evaluation. One lady, she had been my patient for a while, and she was fit. She's 44 years old, and she listed everything I had to say. <laughs> She's like 5'9", weighs 140. She eats right, works all the time, has no sleeping problem. She said, Doc, I know my hormone imbalance is coming, but I'm, I'm going to put it off as long as possible because menopause is coming. Another one was a guy. He came in, 41 years old, no, no fat on him at all. He, he uh, runs his family business. He's, he's in the wine business. He said, Doc, I don't have time to work out, but I work out every day, seven days a week, 30 minutes. He said, I don't care if I have to run right there with my clothes on. I'm going to work out. And the guy showed it. He was 40 years old, and the, my, there's a scale called the Tanita scale that I have in my office that looks at metabolic physiologic age. It said he was 25 years old physiologically. I'm 62. The last time I measured myself, it said I was 46 physiologically. The best it can give you is 15 years younger. The worst it can give you is 15 years younger, older. Most of my patients are coming in, they're 50, and I say, man, you know what? I hate to tell you this, you're 65 years old. But it wakes them up. It wakes them up. But I've seen those patients with proper discipline turn that from being 65 down to 35. But they put in the work. I didn't do it. So let me go ahead and tell you the scenario about estrogen dominance. So here you go. So now you got the stress. You got the, uh, the cortisol going high. You got the insulin going high. Your doctor should be checking your insulin level. I check insulin level on every patient. Fasting insulin. What should your fasting insulin be? Zero. So no higher than six. <laughs> when you haven't eaten for t eight to ten hours, your insulin level should be very low. I don't want my insulin level up because what is insulin? Insulin makes you fat. It stores fat. Insulin blocks the effect of something called um, um, leptin. I don't know if you guys heard of leptin. Leptin breaks down fat. And insulin sec secretes a hormone called ghrelin. Ghrelin makes you hungry. So it's doing the opposite. Insulin inflames the body. Okay? And so now you got this insulin resistance going on, and then you got the stress going on because you're getting fatter and it's just a catch-22. And then your doctor doesn't treat it. I treat insulin resistance. I focus on insulin resistance. The way I do it, I give them testosterone. I, I go through the process, tell them they need testosterone, they need magnesium, they need chromium, and they need berberine. You guys should get some berberine. Just write it down. Not bourbon, berberine. Okay? <laughs> I had a guy talking about, Doc, that bourbon's good. I drink it every night. It's like, no. I told you, berberine. Berberine, head-to-head -to, -head to metformin, is 500 milligrams. It's better. It's a lot healthier. Helps your gut, lowers your cholesterol, and things like that. So, so anyway, so if you can just get somebody's insulin resistance under control, and you get their stress under control, then you can begin to address the, the um, estrogen dominance. But you got to get them hitting the gym. Hitting the gym will help them lose the weight. Here's the thing I want to uh, go ahead and tell you in a nutshell. Your body is based on a process of reduction to oxidation. Everyone is doing that. Right now, if you guys weren't going from reduction to oxidation, you're dead. The most oxidized people in the world is easily found. They're all in the grave. they fully oxidized. You have to constantly recharge your body. Your body is an energy force. It takes energy to burn fat. It takes energy to do things. And so what I do, I focus on that. I say, okay, what can I do to keep my, my, the, the amount of reduction in my body up? And I do that by a bunch of antioxidants. I do hormone therapy myself. I take a lot of supplements. When you go to the gym and lift weights, it releases a powerful antioxidant in the muscle. You get plenty of sleep. That keeps your cortisol level down. You don't eat all this sugar because all that sugar raises your insulin. If I do eat sugar, I make sure I eat some proteins or some vegetables, or I go burn it off immediately. Now, when you do all that, you can keep your insulin levels under control. Now, here's the thing. So I get patients, they do all that, and there's, I have a secret now, and I do it myself. It's called progesterone. Have you ever heard of a man being on progesterone? Any of you ever heard of the hormone progesterone? Okay. Okay. I started using progesterone, and you're talking about leaning my body out. P-R-O, 
G-E-S-T-E-R-O-N-E. -E. Now, let me tell you about the importance of progesterone. Progesterone is the only thing that's going to counteract estrogen dominance. <laughs> when you did everything you possibly could do to keep your insulin under control and your stress under control and you're hitting the weights and you watch what you eat and this still ain't, ain't coming off, progesterone will help get rid of man boobs. If I can say that in here. Yes, sir. You can. Progesterone will lean out your belly fat. Progesterone can, uh, can I, I got to be careful to say, I can't say treat. Progesterone can be therapy for prostate cancer. Progesterone can prevent prostate cancer. Progesterone lowers your risk of colon cancer. It helps shrink the prostate. It causes your hair to grow for this male pattern baldness. It improves libido. It improves erections too, penile erections. <laughs> progesterone, progesterone lowers insulin resistance and it counteracts the effect of stress hormone. So, so if you want to think about cholesterol is, is a hormone or a steroid, it's a powerful antioxidant. So I look at cholesterol differently than any other physician most likely in town. Cholesterol is my friend. It's high for a reason. I don't artificially lower it. You artificially lower it with statin drugs, you can cause brain fog, you can cause muscle aches and pains. I say the cholesterols let me know they're inflamed. If they're inflamed, they're oxidized. So what I do, I, and then cholesterol goes to pregnenolone, which is a memory hormone. Pregnenolone goes to progesterone this end, DHEA over there. I balance those things out. Progesterone then makes cortisol. The DHEA goes to make the testosterone and the estrogen. So when you truly understand what's going on biochemically, you begin to help the patient. So I'm going to just kind of go ahead and, and wrap it up by saying this. So if this patient who is, I'm going to give you an example of a patient. If a patient comes in who is 55 years old and he's 40 pounds over, overweight and I know he has estrogen dominance and I put him on the scale, he says he's 65 years old, he has no energy, he, he's having trouble with erectile dysfunction, he can't sleep. I'm just looking at him and I'm trying to assess one thing with him. You know what that one thing I'm trying to assess? Is he motivated? If he's not motivated, I can't help him. If he's motivated, I'm ready. <clears throat> there was a doctor, he said this once in the medical conference, I mean wellness conference I went to. He said that when people call his office, he, he will ask them, how many doctors have you seen for this problem? If they say anything less than three, he says, okay, go see someone else first. He says, I want them to be at the point of desperation before they come to me. Because what I'm going to do is so opposite, so different than what the medical doctor is doing that they're not going to listen. I have women who come in and say, Dr. Beatty, can you help my husband? I said, is he motivated to come see me or are you trying to drag him in there? Because I can't help him. The mind has to be right to be helped. So, so the point is, so let's take this man who's 50 years old. Let's say he is motivated. But his doctor's not helping. His doctor got him on statin drugs. His doctor got him on metformin for everything that's going on. He got him on sleeping pills. This guy is in a state of poor health. And the doctor is making his health worse. It's called iatrogenic medicine. So what I do, I say, look, the first thing you need from me is an hour consultation. You need to sit down and learn what's wrong here. And the difference, why well, I call myself the wellness doc, not the walking dead. I try to take the people who are walking dead and make them living. <laughs> And on the back of my hat, it says the wellness doc. And I came up with that because I wanted people to understand that they go to medical doctors all the time. You see, your, your friend's the medical doctor. Go see him. He's the, he's the medical doctor. No, I'm the wellness doctor. And so what it is, like what you were saying earlier, we're trying to make these people function better. Disease is dysfunction. You should be able to do a squat. You should be able to run. You should be able to defend yourself, even at 75. So... The thing is, is that, so when that person comes in to me and he's motivated, I give that hour consultation, I make it clear to him what is really going on and what we need to do. And then I go to the, the five pillars and I say, okay, look, I balanced your hormones. Your testosterone levels are good. Your progesterone levels are good. You're sleeping like a baby. You have to go out there and eat right. You have to hit the gym. You have to drink plenty of water. And you have to protect the environment you put yourself in that you're not in a stressful, toxic environment. You do all that, you will be well. And so that's what I want to end by saying to you guys 
that wellness is achievable. I have a lot of people who have done it since I've been doing it for the last eight years in Bakersfield. I have patients that are calling me from other states. I have a lady the other day, she called me, she said, Doc, can you see my dad? He's in North Carolina. I said, well, if he comes see me, I'll see him, but I'm not going to North Carolina. She said, he's willing to come and see you twice a year if need be, because the doctors he sees aren't listening to him. And he's found out what you did for me, and he's, he's just blown away, because everything you tell him that I tell her, she tells him, and he wants the same kind of treatment. So I just want to go ahead and say thanks for the opportunity to come here today to speak, Harold. And I hope I help somebody. <laughs>